21. I'm going to really be speaking a lot about Daniel's life, but I, I wanted to start here with this scripture and um, share with you what God's laid on my heart. Verse 21, chapter 1, book of Daniel. And Daniel remained there until the first year of King Cyrus. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Open up your word, God. Open up our eyes of understanding. Help us to tune in and hear your voice as we explore this biblical character who had great devotion and love for you and was an example for us in our contemporary times. In Jesus' name I pray. I've not uh, preached a lot from the book of Daniel. Um, no particular reason that I'm aware of. I'm not afraid to go check it out. Uh, or, But Daniel was a, an individual who had a prophetic ministry. He had a prophetic ministry for the times in which he lived and even to our times. So there's a lot of people explore Bible prophecy Daniel's name pops up. Um, I think uh, what led me to this and I uh, want to share with you are some things about Daniel's character, his conviction to serve the Lord. The message of Daniel in general in this passage that I read to you is that Daniel was a captive, a hostage as a young man when Nebuchadnezzar went to Israel and battled with Israel and he took the best and brightest out of Israel, Daniel being one of those individuals. Other names that might uh, come into your understanding or maybe memory are Matt, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and the fiery furnace, okay? And uh, these were all young men that uh, Nebuchadnezzar and uh, the Babylonians took prisoner. They took them out of their country, brought them back, and used them, their skills, to further their kingdom in the world. That had to be really rough, to be taken out of your community to a foreign land, a land that honored pagans, worshiped pagans, and the overriding message for me, at least, in this is that God did not deliver Daniel out of captivity from the Babylonians and Persians and other folks who fought. But yet he had him in a position to influence these people. Okay? A lot of us pray for, help me, Lord, uh, to get out of this situation, or help me, I'm oppressed, or deliver me. That wasn't the case with Daniel. He wasn't delivered, he wasn't returned to Israel, um, but yet God used him in this situation because his, of his devotion and commitment to God. Whatever your situation is, whatever struggles that you might have, God knows that. And God says to us in today's time, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I am with you always. And sometimes it helps us direct our prayers in the right way instead of saying, deliver me out of this or help me under the uh, oppression to say, God, give me the strength to be what you want me to be in this situation, okay? God worked many miracle works through Daniel. And it was important to note, for me at least, that it wasn't God used him and then, okay, God, get me out of here. Nothing mentioned about that at all. But he continued to say, I will not be defiled when he was brought before um, his new handlers. And they said, you're going to eat the meat of the kings. 
and this is what you're going to do. And he said, I'm not going to eat the meat that's offered unto your gods. Okay. I've often done the Daniel fast. I did that a lot when I worked in the hospitals. Um, Daniel fast primarily is vegetables and abstaining from other sort of things. It does make you sharper. It does make you keener. And I worked in a lot of trauma centers. And when I worked at Western Maryland Health System in Cumberland, Maryland, I didn't notice it my first year there, but I worked on the day in which we honored pastoral care to the pastors. We had a big shindig. We had um, food. We had um, speakers, but I was on call. And I was busy because it was a trauma center. Second year, I noticed, wow, I was scheduled again on pastoral care event. I really wanted to hang out with some of the pastors and uh, hear about their stories, hear about why they had, um, they weren't volunteers, we paid them to work with us so we could have time off and not be working 24 hours a day. Finally, the third year, I asked my boss, how come I'm always working on that day and everybody else is um, talking about the fringe benefits and how wonderful he is? He said, I know I can count on you, Frank, and I'm not just telling you this, but I've put my best man out there for that day. There were some things that I experienced on that day that were unbelievable. Train wrecks, okay? Cumberland, Maryland was known for its trains at one time. It was a train wreck, I was involved with that. Um, handled three deaths uh, another time. Um, God gave me the skills to do those things. I'm not bragging, okay? But it was just another day of that. So was it with Daniel. It was another day with God. When the folks wanted to find something wrong with Daniel because he was a foreigner in another land, he was in a high position, and there was always jealousy in the royal courts, there was always plots and conspiracies. And then Daniel 6 and 45, it says, When the leaders of the Babylonians tried to uncover some fault in Daniel's life, they found nothing worthy of mention except his faith in God. Now there'd be a deal, wouldn't it? But nobody can find anything wrong in your life except your faith in God. I mean, for us in today, that's what we strive for, our faith in God, our devotion to God. And they tried to highlight that in some crazy way. But the kings loved him, okay? It's mind-boggling that Daniel lived to see Cyrus, the scripture says, the Persian leader, conquer Babylon in October of 539 BC. That may not jump out at you or didn't at me, but that's 60 years, 60 years after Daniel had been taken captivity, if he was looking to go home, it wasn't going to happen. Daniel was probably 80 years old when I read this scripture. Almost 70 years his life was a public display for heathen to see. Okay? In every age, not only in this time, but in every age, God is looking for people that he can use. He's looking in your heart. He's looking in my heart. There's some characteristics that I'm going to give in just a minute, just two or three, that made Daniel kind of stand out and be used of God. Nebuchadnezzar, when he brought him, and Shadrach, and Meshach, and Abednego, and others back to the kingdom, the center of it, he made 
David, the chief administrator over the empire. Daniel 2 and 48, record that. Daniel influenced the lives of Nebuchadnezzar, King Darius, in particular, as we read the Bible, and Cyrus. This was not, as the scripture does not indicate, uh, that this was his last year. He lived a few more years from that, but it's to note those folks that he served under. Daniel had a long ministry. There were 13 kings that crossed his path, or he crossed their path. There were four kingdoms that also changed hands. And yet, the kings utilized him when they had dreams and visions. They had sayers, they had uh, uh, witchcraft, and trying to interpret the dreams from God. Daniel was the only one that could do that. Okay? He had the ear and the favor of God to be able to do that. Proverbs, 22nd chapter and 29, says this that might be applied to Daniel. Do you see a man skilled in his work? He will serve before kings. He will not serve before obscure men. God trains us to be used. You know, I thought of something known like kind of a uh, I smile every time I think about it. I rode in an elevator with Robert C. Byrd when he was alive and Governor Cecil Underwood and two other folks who later became governor of West Virginia. I was asked to say the prayer of the rededication of the Robert C. Byrd facility in Charleston, West Virginia. And Robert Seabird said he wouldn't come unless there was somebody to give a prayer before and after. I was the chaplain at the hospital. I wrote down and he sent a letter to me afterwards thanking me for the prayers and said, if there's anything I can do for you in the future, Frank, here's my number. I showed that to my dad, who was a diehard Democrat. Boy, he just beamed from ear to ear, okay? Robert C. Bird said to my boy these things. I didn't call him about anything. Um, you know, I maybe should have traded him a Jeep and given him a buzz or something like that. I didn't have any idea what to call. But God prepares you and I sometimes for the most unusual situations in our lives, okay? God, when you say, use me, he will use you in ways that will blow your mind. Here are three things that I'm going to lay out that I think we can pull from the book of Daniel as well as Daniel as a man of God. Things that we can use today. It takes, first of all, one conviction. Okay? Daniel made up his mind that he would not be defiled. Okay? Even though he was exiled from Judah, he still felt the heart of the lion of Judah in his bones. Okay? We don't need to compromise in a fallen society. Okay? Jesus came so that we could tell others about his love, his glory, and it takes conviction not to compromise in today's society. I've had those, you've had those. Okay? I thought of our cross out there coming this, this uh, door here. When I think of this statement here, only those who plant flags in the ground of the cross will exert influence for Christ. We make a statement when we come into this building. We make a statement when we gather together in his name. We make a statement by that cross out there that we're here to exert influence of Jesus Christ in our community. 
and we're willing to pick up our cross and follow him, denying ourselves with the conviction that God is in us. We're not perfect. Nobody's perfect in here. Don't get mad at me when I say that, including me. But a conviction that I'll do what Christ wants me to do and I will allow Christ to work in my heart and seek his forgiveness so that I can exert some influence of Jesus Christ, especially in the days we live. Man, our world is turned upside down and crazy. The second thing that I see here in Daniel, he didn't do it alone, okay? It takes the right people in your life, okay? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he prayed for them when they were in the fiery furnace. They prayed for him while he was in the lion's den. They worked together, okay? Daniel had three such friends in them, okay? And they had his back. We as prayer warriors for each other, companions in Christ. God has us as friends. And he has other friends in mind besides maybe us among ourselves. He has them at church. He has them in your family. He has them in your neighborhood. He has them that you can call sometimes across states and other places. I have some in other countries. You might as well. God says, ask and pray for them. And they pray for you. He knew that he wasn't alone. It wasn't an Elijah moment that he, there he was. I'm sure he cried tears for the homeland. I'm sure he cried tears of his life in which he wanted it to be something else or be somewhere something else. But his companions helped him. His friends helped him. Okay? I, I remember when I gave my heart to the Lord and I told some of my friends, I won't be back in this little circle anymore, okay? It's not that I feel I'm better than any of you that I say that, but I'm not, I'm not gonna relent until I see you accept Christ as personal savior, and you're not gonna relent until you see me compromise and be like I used to be before I met Jesus. So. There's nothing but conflict here between us and I'm gonna walk away because I care that much about you. And the third thing that obviously you can see in Daniel's life, despite being thrust into this world, he demonstrated a calmness and courage, okay? It takes courage to stand in the face of the enemy. It takes courage to stand in the face of darkness and rebuke it, okay? Daniel never panicked, okay? Or reacted in the face of opposition. Okay, we say we're only human, blah, 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 blah. But I can tell you that in those trauma centers and trauma situations that I was involved, there was such a calmness came over me that I was able to discern what the next step was necessary, okay? And I had never met these people before, and I never had any contact, but God's Spirit gave me a calmness and a courage that was able to lead us through different transitions at different times. He remained poised and he remained peaceful. I think if I was going to look at any uh, psalm that comes to mind, it would be Psalms 46 and verse 10, where it said, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. It will stay in Psalms 46. We can remain calm when we have a deep, supernatural peace of knowing that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Mm -hmm. God is not caught unawares. 
God is a God of knowing. And as we have a relationship with him, devote our lives with him, he will guide us in areas of ministry that are absolutely awesome. Okay? The devil doesn't know what to do with people of courage and conviction. People who cultivate godly companionship and spiritual calmness. The Lord knows what to do with them. He uses them to change his world. He'll use you, he'll use me, and Daniel is an example of that. If you get uh, puzzled or you get confused or you don't know what to do, just that's where the Word of God comes in handy. You open up and search the Scriptures. You search the Scriptures wherein you think and you find you have eternal life. Let us pray. Our God, we thank you for Daniel. We thank you for countless people in the Bible, countless books that speak to our hearts. And we know it's you, Lord, and we know it's the Holy Spirit giving revelation. In this day and time, as we prepare for your return of the church, help us to focus on you, the leader, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end. Guide us, lead us, direct us. We pray for our community. We pray for the Spirit of God, the convicting power, the love, the joy, to fall upon folks here, the mercy of God to speak to their hearts, and help us, Lord, to be on fire for you. Light and relight our candles, Lord, when they dim or go out. We want to be filled with the Spirit of God in these times. In Jesus' name, amen.